Uh, Gigamega Resources. I'll talk today about uh, developing the Rare Earth Hub in Quebec. Quebec, Canada, basically, we want to bring it back into North America. How do we do that? So, forward-looking statement, as usual. So, the challenges of critical minerals, strategic metals, basically, what we've seen over the last 10 years in this industry, there are no majors coming in to acquire juniors who are developing rare earth projects, lithium projects, cobalt projects, uh, graphite projects. We see that uh, the juniors are obliged to develop them by themselves. At the same time, that creates a huge financing risk for those companies and exposes them to sharp drops in commodity prices where then the project is no longer economic. And quite often, it requires a new technology. And those new technologies have their own issues. So what are the challenges with those new technologies? Quite long R&D process. It's a black, bo black box approach. So you have a black box. How do we know that it works? What's the scale up? The scale up is too aggressive quite often because they want to save time. So they go from a pilot to right away the size of a mine. And that drives cost overruns. Cost overruns cause issues and quite often those companies end up bankrupt and not operational anymore. So quite often the process is more challenging than actually the mine. So how is Geomega uh, doing it differently? So Canada and Quebec advantage. So let's ask a simple question. What is Canadian advantage here in rare earth elements? Is it because our mining projects are so much better than Chinese mining projects? Uh, better than Australian or African projects? I'd say no. Is it because our infrastructure is better? Well, it's still debatable because a lot of those projects are located where? Very far up north. So the infrastructure is not there necessarily either. Is our labor cost? No. But if we look at what's the main advantage is Canada and Quebec have clean and cheap energy. And that is a one very strong point to help us develop the rare sector. And we have to use it. So second point is the strong support for innovation from the governments that we have. So the Quebec North America's rare earth hub opportunity. We can start using our technology, ISR technology that we've developed, to establish Quebec as the clean and cost efficient recycler of choice for uh, rare earth magnets. Why are we focusing on recycling? Because you want to start with a small, high grade feed processor, right? Once we have the magnet processing facility that is generating cash, everybody in this room will be very excited because we know the technology works. Then we can go to other specialty metals which have the need to be recycled as well. In other words, more material to be processed, more cash to be generated. Then the goal, the big goal, is refining concentrates for mines. But that requires a much bigger facility. And that bigger facility, that's usually where people try and go right away. So we'll get there gradually, but we will get there. And that's where we will be the, the, the processor of choice, refiner of choice for rare earth concentrates outside of China. And then once you are there, if you really want to dream big, you can go for all the other sources of rare earths. So it can be the red muds that everybody's been talking about in the US. It can be coal. It can be tailings of other mining feeds. So there are lots of other rares to be processed, but you want to get there gradually, because if you go there too aggressively, we saw what happens. What does it give us having in Quebec a recycling facility? First major advantage, it helps in the future to develop the mines in Quebec or in Canada. Montviel is the project that Geomega has that could get developed as well. Beside that, it attracts downstream processors. So it really attracts the rare industry to North America, to Quebec, and that's what the governments are trying to do. And then finally, it attracts the users of the magnets and the metal. So really, the industry migrated back. Now, Geomega's approach, I look at it as a three stage. You start with lab scale development and you go small 10 times increases. We've done that. We've completed all that. So now we're in the stage two for developing the process for the recycling uh, approach. We are dealing with it, we did, a, we did a pilot, so that's great. But now we are in the demonstration plant. So the objective is once the demonstration plant is running, in the meantime, you're doing R&D to modify your own technology to process those mining concentrates. 
So that's ongoing as well. So by the time you have a, an operational unit for your magnets generating cash, you're ready to move on to the next stage for the mining concentrates. So really the key here is gradual scale up. And the gradual scale up has several advantages. It reduces the technological risk of scaling up. It reduces the capex that's required in the beginning. It allows to, the company to establish cash flow. Very important, cash is king. And brings credibility to the technology because we, uh, we said in the beginning, it's a black box. Number five, relationship with the client. That's very important. You're starting small, but now they know you, they know your product, they know your quality. And finally, it lowers the risk when scaling up because all new technologies, there is always a risk of scaling up. So that's a, our pilot plant. And I'll focus on the three key points for us. The recovery of the reagent. We are using a, a very different reagent that's not traditionally used in the mining industry. We recover 95% of it. That's a huge advantage for us. Because of that, I don't have any liquid effluent. So I don't have any liquid waste coming out from the plant. And that means my iron oxide that's trapped within the magnet as well, I can produce as a high purity iron oxide, which is a saleable product for me. So no liquid tailings, no solid tailings, no tailings at all. Solid material coming in, solid material coming out. And that's the advantage. With, beside that, I have a very small footprint and that means my capex is very low. What do I mean by capex being very low? My capital costs here are at $2.6 million for a plant that can process 1.5 tons per day of material. That gives me potential to generate $10 million in sales per year with a, uh, with a profit margin of 20%. If I want to run the plant at a full capacity, instead of eight hours, I can run it at 24 hours. That's 4.5 tons. So you can multi multiply all those numbers by three. That's six to $8 million of profit per year. That's a very small plant. Now, where is the plant going to be? We just announced that a few days ago. Uh, it will be in St. Bruno, half an hour outside of Montreal, strategic location, serviced by rail, air, sea. Now, the upcoming milestones, you can see what has been completed over the last six to nine months. Now, the main uh, objective is complete the financing, debt financing with the government. As soon as that's announced, then we can move on towards the next stages, which is finalizing all the engineering, a selection of the equipment, start ordering the equipment, construction. All that with the objective of 2020 to become a producer of rare earth elements and Canada and Quebec being a producer. Where is the feed coming from? I'll mention that just briefly. Rare earth magnets, the interesting thing about this, when you produce magnets, the industry average is 15 to 30% waste being generated during the cutting, polishing, of the actual magnets. Once the magnet is made and goes to the OEM, the loss there is minimal. But during the manufacturing process of the actual magnet, the industry is very inefficient. Once that's being lost, it has to be recycled. Today, they're recycling it in China. China is the leader in rare earth recycling, but outside of China, nobody does that. Electric vehicles, wind turbines, that's all the big future volume sources for rare earth magnets. So more growth in all those industries, more magnet waste to be processed. Magnets, if you look at the numbers, 2018, 160,000 tons of magnet was produced. You can do the calculation yourself, what's 15 to 30% waste of that, that's a lot of material. And who is the biggest producer? China, second is Japan. So there's a lot of material that's being generated outside of China that needs to be recycled. Uh, educational process, that's really the next step for generating more and more feed in North America because the recycling industry of today does not know that magnet can be recycled efficiently. Very few recyclers collect it today and ship it to Asia. More and more of them figure out and understand what is it that we are doing and starting to collect it and it's all going to be processed here by us, by Geomega. Uh, the overview today, that industry is over a billion dollars. It's going to be almost two billion dollars in 10 years from now and the potential of our operation is quite significant. You can see the numbers. Even if we put a second plant, I'm still a fraction of what is being processed today. There's a lot to the, to, uh, a lot of opportunity ahead of us. Why are we doing all this? It's their circular economy principle. Once we are in this, it closes the cycle, which Europe and North America are strongly trying to develop right now. And basically, all, I'll finish it with Today, the rare earth pricing, uh, prices are low, but that's what drives demand. Demand is positive for innovation, for uh, recycling.
that's where we are today in the rare cycle. Low capex, low opex, small footprint, clean process, and cash flow, that's the objective of the company in the near future. Thank you very much.